Welcome to Living Redacted, where we uncover the lived experiences of people in conflict. Nuthouse Chatter creates spaces for critical and hilarious conversations that model how to thrive when living with trauma. Living Redacted is one of these spaces. Here, we uncover the lived experiences of people in conflict. And why are we hilarious? Because, you know, <laughs> humor is important for coping. Welcome to our space. Welcome to Living Redacted. We're doing an installment today about how we make enemies. Laura. Yes, Ali. In Syria, if the intelligence services want to take you uh, from your house for, for an interview, want you to come to their office peacefully, they will tell you this. They will say, hey, Laura, how you doing? Uh, our commander would like to have a cup of coffee with you. And uh, this cup of coffee might take 10 years. 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, or you never come back home. So when people say in Syria, hey, would you like to have a cup of coffee? People usually smile because they know. Okay, well, I, <laughs> I have my coffee. I hope it won't take 10 years, but I'm ready for your story. So I'll tell you a story about me in Iraq a few years ago. Uh, I went to uh, open a, a branch for the NGO that I was working for, uh, Stronghold Rescue and Relief. Um, so I went to uh, Baghdad to open a branch in Mosul. So I met, I called my buddy. I'm like, hey man, I'm coming to Baghdad. Uh, meet me at the airport. He's like, I can't meet you at the airport because um, we, can, we can't drive all the way to the entrance of the airport. You have to take a cab and meet me like um, 20 miles away, something like that, okay? I'm like, all right. So I got out after an hour and like, what are you doing here and all the stuff. Got a taxi. He asked me like, where are you from? I'm like, uh, Egypt. So I started speaking Arabic. And then on the way there, on the way to my buddy, um, we see a humongous billboard with Qasem Soleimani. Uh, Qasem Soleimani was the commander of the uh, Iranian Revolutionary Guard Corp. And uh, what happened to him in January 3rd in Baghdad, he had a meeting. We killed him. Wait, pause. Who is we? We killed him. Us, America. Okay. Yes. So we killed him using a drone. He had a meeting in, in Baghdad somewhere and, and we hit his car with a drone. But Qasem Soleimani in Iran and Iraq, uh, he's considered a hero. But for us, he's considered a terrorist. Mm. Heroes are terrorists, depending on your cultural perspective. So what was the billboard that you saw? Oh, the billboard that I saw. The billboard was, uh, we were not forget our martyr's blood. And the guy uh, stopped the car. He, we read the uh, Al-Fatiha. It's, um, it's uh, the first surah in the Quran. Um, so when you open the Quran, uh, the first surah, mm -hmm. I don't know what surah in English, honestly, mm -hmm. and uh, verse maybe, we usually read Al-Fatiha on uh, the souls of our loved ones, our dead mm. ones. So we said, me and him, and I, in my head, I'm like, holy moly, if he knew that, if he knew that I was in the US Army or I'm American, oh my God. And then about a few miles later, we see another billboard that says the same thing. And on the, he stops. On the left of it is the shrine for him. He, they have his oh. uh, blown, up, blown up car with flags, a picture, some flowers. And he's like, would you like to go take a, a picture? I wish I said yes, but I didn't. I said, no, I don't have time. I'm sorry. On the way back, I will do that. And then we read the Fatha again <laughs> next to the billboard. This guy loved him because this guy was from Iran. Okay. The, the cab driver was from Iran. And, uh, and then he dropped me off at my buddy's car. And then my buddy, I told my buddy what happened. And he's like, oh man, you said you're American? I'm like, I said I'm Egyptian, you know, because I was speaking Arabic. And uh, he's like, yeah, it's good. It's good. It's good that you didn't say you're American because it might be a problem. I have a similar um, story that I'll tell. When I was serving in the Peace Corps in 1999 to 2000, I was living in Cherkasy, which is um, central Ukraine. And when I was living there, I was living with a babushka and a dedushka. And we were walking one night in the evening and the the babushka, it was, a, it was dark. We were going through the central square in Cherkasy and she stopped me in front of the, the Lenin statue. The former Soviet Union, their goal was to have every city have a statue of Lenin. 
So the babushka stopped me. Mm -hmm. She stood me in front of the Lenin statue with her hands on my shoulders and she turned my head up and she pointed me at Lenin and she said, Vot Laura Smatri Dedushka Lenin. It was, oh, here, <laughs> Laura, you look, this is grandfather Lenin. And I was standing there with like the sense of, you know, she was trying to give me the sense of the gravity of and importance of Lenin, but I didn't understand it. But you understood the importance of this particular historical figure because to one culture, he's a terrorist, to another culture, he's a hero, similar to Lenin, but you're saying you were right in the mouth of a tiger. That, that's true. And then at the same time, I think I was wearing this hat and I have uh, the American flag on it. And uh, I had to go hire a lawyer to, uh, to open this NGO in Mosul. So uh, my buddy's like, hey, change your hat, wear this jacket. I'm like, why are you doing this? He's like, we're going to a Shia area. When we went there, I got out of the car and it's nothing but Shia militia flags everywhere. Uh, it was nuts, really, it was nuts. It was nuts, me being there. But uh, thank God, like I speak Arabic fluently and I grew up in Egypt and uh, mm. everything was fine. Everything was really fine. Who makes us enemies? It makes me think, who made us enemies? Mm. Who, made, who made us enemies? I'm not talking about uh, Qasem Soleimani, I'm talking about the Shia mm. people in, in Iraq. So this idea that a historical figure or a political or public figure can be a hero in one society's eyes and a you know, terrorist or enemy in another society's eyes and the way, is it the way in which America killed him? The fact that we killed him, a combination of the two, it almost feels like to me in the story that you're telling that we solidified in a way or galvanized the, the role of this person as being a hero and in so doing galvanized the role of America as being the enemy. In, in my opinion, you can't just go uh, rolling around killing the official representatives in different countries. It's nuts, really nuts. The way we killed the guy was nuts. Iran and America are already enemies, right? So we make more enemies by, for example, killing Qasem Soleimani in Iraq. So it shows that the Iraqi government is a puppet to us. So we undermine the Iraqi government. So the Iraqi mm -hmm. government looked like puppets, like nobody. Wow. Other country officials go to Iraq to visit, to make have meetings, and then we kill them. Wow. So that doesn't look good. Uh, it shows us that we're not professionals and we're just savages. The way we kill them, honestly. So that's how we make enemies, Laura. Another way of making enemies, the way we kill people, our enemies. We make more enemies. How does America lose friendly countries? It undermines the other government that we're friends with. Do you think they like us now? No, we made them look like shit. Nobody can trust them and go visit them or like go have a meeting with them. They would get killed. Oh. They can't protect other country officials in their country. See? I see. So you think, do you think we're making also the Iraqi government look bad or good? Right, exactly. So did we gain more enemies? Yes. I see. The problem is our government will pull these moves and then, for example, Al-Quds Brigade, who uh, Qasem Soleimani uh, commanded. Do you think that uh, they just don't want to do the same to any American? Because they put us in a big basket. They're like, America is an enemy and I'm American, so I'm an enemy regardless. My wife is an enemy, my kids are an enemy. So who made my kids and family an enemy? The way we kill people or other country officials, the way we kill them. In my book, that's not the right way to do things like this. The moment of realization that we have created enemies that we cannot imagine. This makes me uncomfortable. Laura, this is very important to know. These billboards praising Qasem Soleimani and he was our martyr. We'll never forget your blood. That means that we're going to revenge, right? They're never going to forget what America did to kill him. 
These billboards are all over the place in, in Baghdad, but it's not in the green zone. It's not behind the HESCO barriers. It's not behind the T-walls. It's not. So we're sitting in this base in Iraq, in Baghdad. I have no idea what's happening behind the fence. What is people pissed off about? What people are praising? Also, the shrine is critically important. If you think of it symbolically, the billboards are praising the martyr, while the shrine codifies, archives the violence that was delivered to the Iranians. So to show in a public space near the airport the vehicle in which he was murdered, this act of showing demonstrates to everyone the need for remembrance and if, you know, we'll extend to what you just said, the need for vengeance. It's very frightening. That shows you that we're so disconnected from the reality of what's happening on the ground in Iraq, not inside the base, outside the base reality. So I was really alarmed when I saw these billboards everywhere and we're saying everything is going great in Iraq and it's fine. But we have to realize that these billboards are everywhere, Laura, and we're just sitting inside our bases with our eyes closed and ears closed and, and just going with the agenda, whatever agenda we're there for. Thank you for explaining that. You're welcome. To learn more, like, subscribe, and share Living Redacted with your friends and colleagues. Oh, I, I didn't, excuse me for my awkward pause. I am often just awkward.